L'ex-prisonnier va devenir président. Il va libérer le pays de l'apartheid. The heritage and legacy of Nelson Mandela are the subject of great debate right now. And to discuss this, we're talking with Jean-Yves Olivier, codenamed Mr. Jack, in the new French documentary Plot for Peace, which has just been released. The film charts the progress of a French businessman who, on the sidelines and in the shadows, worked to free Mandela and bring down apartheid. It makes you the lead figure. And while I'm not going to give away any spoilers, I'd like to evoke with you the man we've just lost. When Mandela walked free in 1990 after 27 years in jail, you came out with the phrase, Mandela knows nothing about me and my secret history, but it's bound up with my own. You were in the crowd anonymous. What did you feel? It was extraordinary. It was the first time I saw him the man I'd fought for for years and in whose cause I'd left no stone unturned. And there he was, in front of me. The feeling that he didn't know who I was did perhaps add to the emotions I was feeling. You met Nelson Mandela later when he learned about your role in his life. Were you impressed? What did you think of the man when you finally met him? First of all, the fact I could shake his hand, sit down beside him and talk was miraculous for me. L'homme était encore à la période cravate, cravate, chemise. Il n'avait pas encore abordé. He was still wearing a collar and tie at the time, and hadn't started wearing the multicolored Madiba shirts yet. Il me reçoit très simplement parce que c'est sa simplicité qui. He welcomed me very simply because that was his style, and we chatted about his past, what I did, how I saw things, why I did what I did. Comment j'ai perçu les choses, pourquoi j'ai agi. Et puis, brusquement, à un moment donné, je me rends compte que j'ai oublié mon appareil photo. And then suddenly I realized I'd forgotten my camera. Détruit ma 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 réflexion parce que j'étais. That completely threw me, and I lost my composure somewhat. Et lorsque, comme c'était son habitude avec ses visiteurs, il 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 propose. And when it came, as I knew it would, to the traditional moment when Nelson offered to have a photo taken with his guest, I didn't want to have to admit I'd forgotten it. D'agir beaucoup plus rapidement. We didn't have mobile phones at the time to help us react quickly, so I found myself saying, "Thank you, Mr. Mandela, but I prefer to keep an image of you in my heart." This would prove to be a great shame, as subsequently when I met him, I wasn't going to change my position. So I don't have any photos of the two of us alone. It's only when someone else has been around to snap one that I've had any of me and Mandela. It must be said again that in the 1960s and after, even well after his status as universal hero and man of peace was assured, Mandela was seen as a terrorist by some. In your opinion, how did he change the face and destiny of South Africa? Écoutez, ce statut lui avait été donné par par des gens très importants. Madame Thatcher l'appelait un terroriste. Some very important people branded him a terrorist, like Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. But this was because Mandela belonged to the Marxist-Leninist camp, opposed to the Anglo-Saxon conservatives. So everything was done to blacken his image, his reputation and his health. But very little stuck. Pressure mounted for him to be freed. And in 1987, the South Africans begin a dialogue with Mandela, promising to free him if he renounces violence. This Mandela refuses to do, and it should be noted that his freedoms announced by President F. W. de Klerk, who insists on the fact that the liberation is unconditional. Mandela's perception of violence is, however, a negotiation tactic. He knew that renouncing violence before being freed would make it harder to threaten violence later during negotiations if they went badly. So I don't think he was a violent man. He proved this himself. It was possible to find his position over violence ambiguous up to the moment when he makes his Soweto speech. After that, there's no doubt about his vision for a new non-violent South Africa. What is Mandela's particular heritage for South Africa and the African continent as a whole? Did any other African leader cultivate so many of their fellow presidents? I'm very happy to ask this question. Because... 
I'm very happy you ask that question because his African policies and actions have been overlooked in comparison to what Mandela did at home. He's much more than a South African leader. He set out on an ideological reconquest of the ideals of good governance throughout Africa. For example, he commits to supporting democratic governments and personally mediates disputes. He leads the talks between Zaire's President Mobutu and his successor Laurent Kabila. Mandela intervenes in Burundi, writing to President Lesuba to encourage him to hold elections in Brazzaville. So he was a democrat who saw it was vital for the rest of Africa to be democratic. Especially as this would safeguard his own position in South Africa. Jean-Yves Olivier, merci beaucoup d'avoir répondu à nos questions. Merci à vous.